I'm declaring over you today that your fear will not happen. Amen. I said your prayers will happen. Amen. I said your fears will not happen. Amen. I said your prayers will happen. Amen. When others are testifying of the goodness of God this year, you will not be excluded. Amen. When others ibasha kopale nredi barato shiki chiki ponda pankus kiti di pante kavalanda embratus kapasho kontro korusete. When others are testifying of the goodness of God, I said you will not be excluded. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The rest of this year things are getting better. Amen. The rest of this year things are working out for you. Amen. The rest of this year things are changing for you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This year will end with a loud testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout, I receive it. I receive it. Say grace. Grace. Say grace. Grace. Say grace. Grace. Say this is my story. This is my story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Can please have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone, welcome to church. Welcome, welcome, welcome to church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're grateful for God for bringing us to this point. And we're just excited to know what the Lord is doing His faithfulness, His kindness. Amen glory to God. All right, so we're going to get into the Word of God today. We're going to get into the Word of God today. And um, welcome. Let me look at him and say, welcome to church today. Let me find out what their name is. Find out what, let me have a conversation with your neighbor. What's your name? Yeah, what's your name? Yeah, what's your name? I, I, yeah, I met someone this morning. Yeah, what's your name? You know, have you, did you find out their names? Yeah. Hallelujah. What's your name? Find out how they're doing. Glory to God hallelujah amen all right so let, let's go ahead into the word of god let's pray father we pray as your word goes in today let it come forth with clarity lord anoint my tongue in such a way that I speak clearly the word of god and people will understand so much people come to a deeper place in court needs to be met in the name of the lord jesus christ and the name of our god will be glorified amen amen praise the lord the subject i'm talking about today it's one thing every christian needs to know the reason why is that personally I think it's one of the biggest things I learned in my life. It's one of the biggest things that helped my Christian life. It helped me personally. You know, and this is what triggered it. When I was in primary four, primary five, they were about. Um, my brother was in boarding school. My older brother was in boarding school. My mom was, um, my mom was, you know, after um, primary school teaching class, we'll go for tutorials, what we'll call lesson. And after lesson, the driver will come pick you, take you to your parents and, you know, I would take it to my mom. So this day I'd gone back to see the Jeva had picked me and I'd come to my mom's store. My mom was a trader. So I'd come to my mom's store. And when I got to my mom's store, I was shocked because my mom wasn't there. But that time, most of the time, my mom is always in the store. So when my mom was not in the store, I asked the I asked the store manager, where is mom? And she said, My mom had gone to see my brother, which is strange because if you were in boarding school in those times, you don't just go and see your kids anytime. You have to go on visiting days and all of those kind of things and i said why did she go and see him is something the matter and he said um the pastor which was a prophet of a church she used to attend before had a vision and sent the daughter he said he sent the daughter this morning to tell my mom that anywhere my older brother is that he's dying that you know that he's dying that he's sick he's dying anywhere he is they should go and look for him and my mom and you know there was no telephone those years and my mom had taken his things and gone to look for my brother so eventually my mom came back and i was interested in hearing that part of the story because how does someone there's no internet there's nothing you're not even really connected to each other know that someone is dying so my mother came back and now told me the big story that uh, my mother my brother's school was in a was in a was surrounded by a village something had gone wrong you know and one of the villagers had taken my brother and was trying to behead him and they caught him on the side of the chin and it was a big wound as a matter of fact when my mom got there i think he was just out of surgery where they were stitching up his chin because it was a big wound and you know when she got there the school authorities now began to ask how did you know this happened we're going to say we're going to call you but our priority was to save your child first before we called you and as stupid as it sounded my mom said the prophet told me to come that my child's life was in danger 
you know, when that happened, you know, as I began to grow spiritually, I was like, you mean that someone can be so blessed spiritually that without being in a physical space, they can know what happens in another space? You mean that that is possible? I said, Lord, this is life changing. This life, if you run a business, this life changing. That you can know that the markets will not favor you and position some other way. Wow! You know, this life changing. You can know ahead of time that I'm going to get a job here. I'm not going to get a job here. This is life changing. I said, okay, okay. So I began to research into it. And, and that's why this teaching is for everyone. Let me tell you what this teaching is for. Number one, if you feel that you are in the place in life where you want to make critical decision. Critical decision can be like you want to invest a lot of money. Critical decision can be like you want to get married. Maybe you want your children to do one or two things that's critical to their future. This teaching will tell you how God can really help you, lead you, and guide you. For some people, for some people, you are here and you are really in a mess. Maybe you're stuck, my company is stuck. This teaching is going to teach you how to recognize God's guidance that can bring you out of the mess. And some other people, the reason why teaching is important is that you need to just clarify what's the next thing that God will have you do. Because people are pulling you in different kind of directions. People are pulling you in different kind of directions. You just need to clarify what's the next thing that God will have you do. So I'm going to talk to you quickly today about how the you know how to hear God for yourself. How to hear God for what yourself? How the Spirit of God guides you, how the Spirit of God leads you personally, how to hear God for yourself, how the Spirit of God guides you, how the Spirit of God leads you personally. Are you here? Oh, that's so weak. Are you here? Can you say amen? amen hallelujah some of you are trying to you know trying to make up your mind should i should i should i divorce or i should stay in the marriage some people are there right now should i leave the relationship or stay in the relationship some are saying that i've done everything to make this business business grow what else do i need to do people are asking so many of those kind of questions people are asking questions like you know i, I don't know what else to do right now and there's guidance you must know something that as a believer one of the advantage you have is that you have more information beyond the senses you can know things beyond what you see what you touch and what you hear the spirit of god can actually grant you intelligence i'll give you some stories i'll give you some stories i remember when i'm going to start the bagada church someone says why did you know i i remember that one of my mentors one of my i looked up to i told me the best place to start the church was the yaba and the reason why was that he said that you finished from university of lagos University of Lagos has is close to Yaba. If you start the church there, there'll be a lot of pool of people to Yaba. It will not be a lot of distance. I said, okay, thank you, sir. Then my aunt had told me because I had also had this fellowship were done in a solo that was growing and thriving, and people knew us. I said, if you start in a solo, it's good. People knew you grew up here, you have support here. I said, that's fine. But one day when I was praying, I had a vision. I had a vision. And in my vision, I saw that, you know. I was at Bagada bus stop and I took about three or three, two, three minutes walk and I got to this venue and God says, that's the venue. It was in the vision. I didn't even know where I was. So I called one of our leaders in Bagada and I said, you know what? I was, I saw this vision, this and this. Is there any place like that? And he said, well, I don't know of any place like that. Let me go and find out. He came back and told me that a restaurant had opened up just a few weeks or a few months ago and they had the hall, but it wasn't sure if they're going to open for a church use. Long and short story of this story, it was open for a church use. That is where our church started. That's where our church started. You know, the reason I'm saying so is this. The reason I'm saying so is this. And this is very powerful. The reason I'm saying so is this because you are making very great decisions right now many great decisions right now and you need to be sure the reason why is that there's a place you need you need assurance knowing that i'm doing the right thing some of you have plan a and plan b what about if god is not plan a and plan b if god planned his plan z because they're saying god is it plan a or plan b what about if it's not plan a or plan b if it's plan z glory to god I said glory to God. This is very powerful. Life changing for everyone. Some of you have been praying about something. And listen, all of you, I want to advise. If you're praying about something and nothing has really happened, 
there's a message I have on YouTube. It's called the prayer of inquiry. Go back and watch it. It's a, I can't teach that today. You know, you've been praying about something. You've done everything you want to do, but you've not seen the kind of result. You should stop praying and begin to ask God, okay, God, what exactly is happening? Let's look into the word of, what, what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Guidance is very important. God designs us in such a way to depend on him for guidance. Exodus chapter 32. Let's look at it. Ex chapter 13 rather. Exodus chapter 13 verse 21. Look at the children of Israel. Look at how Israel moved from slavery to the wilderness to the promised land. There was three moves. They moved from slavery to the wilderness to the promised land. See what the Bible says. Exodus chapter 13 verse 21. Do you have it? The guys at the back, yeah, we need to hurry now. The Bible says, and the Lord, watch this now. How did, question, how did Israel know, because it was a journey, how to go forward? The Bible says that this will happen. The, the Lord was before them in a pillar of cloud. What was the pillar of cloud for? To what? To lead them. So, this is what that meant. When Israel saw the cloud moving, they would also what? Move with the cloud. The reason why I'm saying so is this. When you say your life is slow, slow based on what? Is it God that told you that? So the Bible says this, and the Lord went before them by the day in the peel of cloud to lead them by the way and in by night in the peel of fire to give them light to go by the day and by the night. This is very powerful. So this is how Israel moved. In the day, there will be a cloud to lead them. At night, there will be fire to lead them. Do you know something? There are instances in the Bible where the peel of cloud was there for one year. It never moved. And you know what? Israel was stuck there for one year. But they were not stuck because they were in the will of God. You know what I'm saying? So some people are jumping ahead of God. Some of you are just in a hurry. Can I tell you the truth? Faraburu <laughs> kubale. And what is motivating them? My friend on Instagram, my friends on, on, on TikTok, you know, you, you have been propelled. All my friends are getting my, he said, my age mate. Who is your age mate? Were well, you all born together? The way, let me tell you something. The way God designed life, some people are going to shoot up very fast. Some people are going to catch up later. There's some people, it will be overnight that their own stuff will happen. Do you know how God designed you? And if you're not careful, you look at another person's race and you lose confidence in your own race. Look at him and say, my race is not your race. race. Even as a couple, husband and wife, my race is not your race. You must, my race is not your race. I know you love me. I know we're friends. But my race is not your race. See, I can't compare what God is doing in your life. The season you are in. See, seasons are different for different people. We can be close and be in different seasons in life. You must understand that. We can be friends and be in different seasons in life. The fact that it's happening for you doesn't mean God has forgotten me. Don't make it seem as if because you're in an up season. My season is down. Some of us, it's not a down season. God is just prepping us up because we're going further praise God I said praise God have you noticed in the Bible the women that had delay in childbirth had supernatural children so it almost seemed as if God was doing extra work look at Hannah by the time she gave birth her son became the prophet and the judge of the whole of Israel the people that gave birth before her what did their children become Anna had a step a stepwife. What's her name? Penina. Eh? Penina. Penina. Mention one name of Penina's children. Nobody's not known. Nobody bears their name. This is six thousand years after people are bearing Samuel. But in human judgment, you will have thought that Hannah was backward. You will not see that the hand of God, that God was fixing her because of something that was coming bigger. You must learn to rest. That God is working on it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, so we, we read about guidance. So how does God lead? So why is guidance important? I'm, I'm telling you. 
Some of you now, someone say, ah, uh, be a politician. Is that where God is asking you to go to? Is it the right time? Yesterday, I was watching a testimony, and it was, uh, it, was a, it was a traditional king. The traditional king said he came to see Pastor Deboe. And he came to Pastor Deboe, and Pastor Deboe said that. He brought the sister that had cancer to see Pastor Deboe to pray for him. And Pastor Deboe looked and said, hmm, prayed, and looked at him. He said, I won't talk to you. He said, I don't have a problem. My sister has a problem. He said, but as you came in, I saw a vision about you, not your sister. He said, why? I don't know why God is talking to me about you, not your sister. Then I said, okay, what, sir? He said, the Lord said you'll be the king of your village. He said, it's not possible, sir. I'm not from a royal family. I can't be the king. Long and short, years after that, he discovered that he was a bastard child of the king. Years after that. And Pastor said, when they want to make you king, they, when they announce you are king, he said, pack a load and run away. Go away for three years. Come back after three years. If you don't, if, if, if you don't go away for three years, he said, you will not last on the throne. He said, just about 10 years after, what happened was that they did the oracle and all the king's children did not pass the test. So the oracle now asked the father and said, do you have one more son? He said, I have one more son, but I've disowned him. And I disowned him because his mother, they just explained the whole situation and all of the story. Long and short of the story, they said, that will be the king. As soon as they sent for him, he said, when they told me 10 years ago, and I did not believe that I would be king, he said, I ran away for three years. He said, I came back. See, guidance has a way of preserving you. Guidance helps you make better decisions than head knowledge. Someone was talking to me about guidance. He said, Pastor, guidance is very powerful. He said, remember this person that I, I, I really like, I wanted to date, but I told you that the Spirit of God didn't allow me to date. This was when we were in school, though. This is many years ago. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what happened? Uh, he died. He said, it was when he died, he died just about five or six, he died into five years into his marriage. He said, that's when God told me. He said, I, he said that I knew he was going to die early. That's why I was holding you back. But there was nothing in the present that showed he would die early. When God tells you that partner, don't deal with him. You're like, no, no, no. It's a perfect partner. You see, you must know man judges based on the present, God judges based on the future. The one that lives in the future can tell you more about the future. Pay attention. Because now that you have gotten a green card, you must travel. You must know that not every open door is God's door. Some open doors are demonic traps. Even Satan can open doors. That's the truth. Even Satan can open doors. Let's read Psalm, Psalm 32 verse 7. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah is too low. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Psalm 32 verse 7. Let's go ahead. Psalm 32 verse 7. Oh glory to God. Why is guidance important? Number one, guidance helps us make better decisions. Guidance helps us make better decisions. Psalm 32 verse 7. It says, Thou art my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. See what it says. It says, You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. Why are you my hiding place? Why do you preserve me from trouble? He says, You compass me about the songs of deliverance. So, watch what the psalmist is saying. The psalmist is saying that others around me get into financial trouble. He said, But you preserve me. Others around me get into investment trouble, but you preserve me. So, the deal looks good, but God pulls you back. Everything looks okay. He said, you preserve me. He says, you compass me with songs of deliverance. What does that mean? He says, you deliver me. So the next verse now tells you how God does it. Verse 8. He says, how does he do it? He said, I will instruct thee. So how does he preserve you from trouble? He will what? Instruct thee. The inability to hear instruction and take instruction will get into trouble. He said, I will instruct thee. And teach thee in the way that thou should go. He says, I will guide you with my eyes. Look at the Passion Translation. Are you here? Are you here? Can I be honest with you? Some of you, the reason why you're struggling, and I'm, this is by prophecy. The reason why you're struggling your career is because you're not where God will say you should be. The, there's a fundamental law of prosperity. The Bible says, he that till let his land shall find gold. He says, he that copies his neighbor shall have vanity and poverty, plenty of it. I'm telling you, there's nothing in my family that shows I could be a pastor. Nobody in my generation has been a pastor before. Like in my family, you know, some families say this is a pastor, this is a pastor. There's nobody like that in my family. When I told my mother I'll be a pastor, he said that what did you do that? We said, What interest God in you? He said, We don't become pastors in our family. I'm telling you the 
should because some of you are here copy copy that's what is destroying your destiny I want to be, I want to be, I want to feel among, I want to be, I want to feel among, I want to be, I want to feel among, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. That's what is affecting copy, copy. You will copy and ruin the destiny. Be an original, not a copy. Be an original, not a copy. Everybody has a place you are called to be an original. Praise God. <laughs> when I see pastors, I want to preach like another pastor. I normally laugh. I said, they don't want to hear that pastor. They'll go to his church now. I'm just, I'm just grateful in my skin. You don't see me trying to. Ah, that's not my gift. If I try it in one service, I will have a headache. For those that is their gift, thank you. God bless you. You know, one of my one of my juniors in the school, I met him. He has not seen me for about 25 years. He now heard about next level prayer from his younger brother. He's been abroad. He said, I'm not surprised. He said, This is how you've been since when I've known you, when you were just about 12 years old. You must know something there. There are patterns in your spirit that tells your future. Learn not to deviate from your pattern. Android does not, Android does not charge Apple phone. Not everything works for your destiny. So you see someone charging with, you say, ah, is that a charger? Charge my phone. He's using an Android phone. An Android charger can charge it. It can power it because they are connected. But now you are wondering why the charger is not charging you. Because you are not designed together. Praise God. I said praise God. That's the way you must realize. There are some relationships that no matter what they do to you, you must never fight them. Let me tell you something. There are relationships in my life. No matter how they mistreat me, I'm sorry. The reason why is that that was how Lot was stupid. He did not know that he was not the blessed person. That he was connected to the blessing. He detached from who? From Abraham. And he was very smart. He, he, he told Abraham, I will choose first. Yeah. He said, he looked at the best and chose the best places. The day he came out of Sodom and Gomorrah, he lost all his wealth. He lost his wife. His two children had become influenced so much that they were sleeping with him. And the reason why I'm saying so, listen to me. The relationship that will be most attacked in your life are covenant relationship for the next level. The relationship that will be most attacked in your life and you must hear. And this morning I'm leaving church. Leaving. Who brought you as he told you to leave? So when we talk about leading, we're talking about guidance. You are guided. You know. Someone said, uh, uh, you know, someone was telling me, say, the way you preach, I understand. I said, because I'm your pastor, I have the voice to talk to you. It's like your mother. If your mother stands here and calls your name, you will know your mother has called. Because there's a mother, it is intrinsic in you. The same thing. And I'm saying so because some of you, you have moved away from covenant relationships. You have moved away from certain partnership and it's backfiring right now. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. All right, I was trying to read the scripture to you. Psalm what? Psalm 34 and Psalm 32, verse 7. See what the Bible says here from the Passion Translation. Lord, you are my secret, you are my secret hiding place, protecting me from this trouble, surrounding me with songs of gladness. Your joyous shout of rescue releases my, my breakthrough. I pause in your presence. That's what it was saying. How does this happen? Verse 8. Verse 8 says this. I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing you. The thing is that, you know, most people that do their businesses really think that God cannot give you business instruction. He said, I will stay close to you. I, I, I will stay close to you, instructing you, guiding you along the path for your life. There is a path for your life. I would advise you along the way, lead you with my eyes as your guide. So what does it say? This is your portion now. He said, don't make it difficult. Don't be spending weekend in his house in Ikoyi and be asking God, is it the one or not? You will hear he's the one. Because your emotions are already tangled. Are you getting me? Your emotions are already tangled. Don't go and apply for PR and say, Lord, you know, when the result comes out, if it's you, I will know if you're the one. No, sir. Don't make it difficult. Don't 
to make it difficult. You can make it difficult for you to hear God. Yeah. You can make it difficult for you to hear God. How? Your emotions are entire. And that's why, let me say, all of you that are young, I mean, all of you that, no, no, you're not young. All of you that want to date or marry here, before you start liking, once you just see it, carry it to prayer first. The reason why is that once your emotions are inside, you will hear yourself. Can you hear yourself? Yes. Loud and clear. And you will think that God spoke to you. Before you start gathering documents to submit to Canada and start taking tests, settle it first in prayer. Don't buy ITLC first. Or what do you pass? IT what? I, I else. <laughs> Don't pass what you have to pass. And not say I'm praying. The reason why is that already you are gone. And there's something about divine timing. You may need to travel, but don't travel ahead of time. Why? If you miss the timing, you miss the target. If you miss the timing, you lose the target. You, you, when you miss the timing, you lose the target. Some of us are beginning to set goals for 2024. How can you set goals to the one? How can see? Are you the goalkeeper of your life? You will go to God. 2024 is coming. Lord, show me about my career. Because are you going to achieve the goal by yourself? Why not let the Lord speak to you about the goal? And there's something about God. He always stretches you out of your comfort zone. Lord, someone said, yeah, next year, next year, I just want to be married. Marry yourself. You give goals as if you have the power to control it. Next year, I want to be married. I want, uh, ordered, I want to make $2.5 million. You know, that's great. But a lot of your goals are outside of control. If it's out of my control, but not outside of his control, I want to talk to him before I set what? My goals. Glory to God. A lot of goals were still during COVID year. The goals didn't reach anywhere. Glory to God. It says this. So don't make it difficult. It says, I will advise you along the way. Lead you with my eyes as the guide. So don't make it difficult. Continue. Don't be what? Don't be stubborn. When I take you where you have not been before. Don't make me tug you. And pull you along. What did he say? Just come with me. Glory to God. Why is guidance very important? Why is guidance very important? Number one guidance improves our decision making and decision determines destiny the bigger the decision the more guidance you need the bigger the decision the more guidance you need spiritual guidance reduces error yeah spiritual guidance reduces error because you begin to have more data than just the data you rely on naturally you begin to have more data than the data you rely on naturally glory to god the second thing guardian does is this oh this is very powerful guardians prevent deception the reason why is that genuinely people can be deceived what genuinely people can be deceived second corinthians 11 verse 3 the passion translation quickly Second Corinthians 11 verse 3. The Bible says, says, I'm afraid that just as if was what? Let's read together. Want to go? If was what? Was if deceived? So, the Bible says, if was genuinely deceived. You can be genuinely deceived to think he's a good man. You will see a Yoruba demon and you will think he's a born again pastor. You will see a scammer and you will think he's investment. Because you can be genuinely deceived. So, spiritual guidance helps you to not enter deception. The reason why is that man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside. So, let the one that can see inside tell you what's inside. Glory to God. I said 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 glory to God. 
I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Awesome. So the first question is that, hey, can God speak to me? If I want to hear God, should I go and seek a prophet? Listen to me. That's not what we do. In the Old Testament, and, and someone will say that, ah, but Saul went to seek a prophet. David went to seek a prophet. But you must remember that in the Old Testament, there's a change between the Old Testament and the New Testament. You are a child of God. You know, you have the Spirit of God. In the Old Testament, they didn't have the Spirit of God. So they had to go and seek a prophet. So a prophet will tell them what to do. That's not right in the New Testament. In the New Testament, a prophet should not be giving you personal direction for your life you should be receiving personal direction from God. So in the Old Testament, because they didn't have the Spirit of God, they will go and meet a prophet. But in the New Testament, we have the Spirit of God. Can we go and seek a prophet? You can go and meet a prophet, but for no direction, you can meet for confirmation. How do I know that? At um, George chapter 2, it says, In the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Why did he say all flesh? Because in the Old Testament, only few people had it. And those few people were the ones that you used to go and meet for what? Direction. But he says, Now I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. He said, Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Who oh, glory to God. So, when your wife says, Let's go and meet this prophet to tell us what to do. Say, Honey, let's pray first. So that we can know what the Lord is saying to us first. Let, let me show you that quickly in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, where the Bible says prophets confirm. Why? How do I know God doesn't lead it by prophet? Romans chapter 8, verse 14, first of all. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Quickly. Let's read. One to go. As many as led by prophet are the sons of God. What does it say? As many as what? Led by the Spirit of the sons of God. So that's how you know. Someone says that when you sing, you know, oh my God, are you ready for me? Let's just bust some bubbles. Let's just cause some trouble today on social media. So I'm going to say, when you sin, God stopped talking to you. That the reason why you have stopped talking, hearing God is because of your sin. That's not true. When Adam sinned, God spoke. Is it not your Bible? When Cain sinned, God spoke. So what is your sin that God is not speaking to you? Is your sin that powerful? In fact, when does God talk to you more? When you are in sin to recover you out. But religion says when you sin, God will stop talking to you. That's not Bible. When Adam sinned, Bible says God spoke. He even came in the cool of the day. He had a conversation with them. When Cain sinned, God asked him, where is your brother? The reason why is that the time you need to hear the voice of God is even when you are wrong so that God can recover you. So someone says, what I sin, how come I don't hear? Because your teaching have told you that and teaching determines what you experience. Just like some teaching says that if you don't dream, you are spiritually blind. Have you heard that before? Oh, come on. Have you heard that before? If you don't dream, you are what? So they'll begin to guilt trip you for not being a dreamer. Nonsense. Ignorance on rampage. They say if you don't dream, you're if you don't dream, you are spiritually blind. I want to ask you, was Jesus spiritually blind? Yes or no? no. Did he dream? No. There's no one dream recorded of Jesus of Jesus in the scripture. My ma- I don't dream just like Jesus. You can keep dreaming like Joseph. I have no problem with you. But me, I'm like Jesus. I don't dream just like Jesus. Paul that wrote three quarters of the New Testament. There's no one dream written on Paul in the scriptures. I'm not condemning dreaming. But don't let exalt one channel of spiritual communication over others. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. See what the Bible says about prophets here. Act. This is what prophets do in the New Testament. Act chapter 15 verse 32. Act 15 verse 32. Quickly. Act 15 verse 32. See what the Bible says here. Oh, wow. So you must remember that as many as are led by the Spirit of God and the sons of God, that means that you're a portal of the divine. I'm a portal of the divine. In me, divine and divine and human connects. Acts 15 verse 32. And Judas and Silas being prophet also themselves, exalted the prophet many words and did what? Did they give them guidance? They only confirmed them. There was a confirmation, not a guidance. So what does confirmation mean? Oh, I already sensed this with my heart and the prophet says, this is what they should be doing right now. Yeah. 
Glory to God. So why don't people hear the voice of God? The first reason is ignorance. The first reason is ignorance. The reason why is that you can hear the voice of God, but you must be trained. How many of you mean when GSM came out, a lot of us did training on how to pick the phone? The first problem with GSM was pin and POC number. Pin and POC. Because it, there was nothing wrong with the phone. It was just the way we were trained. Look at Samuel. God kept calling Samuel. Samuel, Samuel run to Saul. He will, he, he will run to Eli. Samuel, Samuel will run to Eli. He will run. He will run. And the question is this. Why didn't Samuel know the voice of God? Because you have to be taught and be trained to know the voice of God. And that's why you're here. Because you keep calling the voice something. It's not something, it's someone. You keep saying something. It's not something, it's what? Someone. And because you think it's something, you treat it like something. If it's someone, not just someone, if it's God speaking, treat it like God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Why don't we hear the voice of God? Because we think that God will speak to our senses. So when God is speaking, you look. Mm, no. God is speaking his inside. He speaks to your spirits. Glory to God. Can it be? Where is can it be here? You, come, Chuma. Chuma, come with your phone. Um, come to. No, no, not you, him. Yeah. Um, is your phone with you? Yeah. Call. Call him. Make sure your phone is ringing out. I want to show you something. Your phone is ringing out right now. Yeah. Call him. Yeah. Just move. You don't have airtime. It's ringing out, not vibrate. I want it to ring out. I can't hear it. What? No, I need this to ring out. Can your own phone ring out? Okay, swap. You go. Then he can come. Yeah. So call him. Your phone is not ringing out too. I can't hear it. But it can't ring out when it's ringing on your hand, can it? Call again. These guys, do they have real phones? <laughs> but it can't ring out when it's ringing here because this is not meant to make it work. Please, does someone have the phone that rings out? Does the old phone ring out? It doesn't ring out. You need to have a phone that rings out. Yeah. Whose phone is that? So let somebody else come with a phone that rings out that we can. Who is that? What? This is a different phone. Menas phone. Do you have his number? Okay. Good. This one rings out. I praise God. Okay. Let's see. Dr. Chuma. He's calling you, right? Yes, sir. What is ringing? The phone. God is talking to you, but it's your spirit that is receiving. So, the problem is that when we say, uh, so th thank you, I want to show you something. This is the problem we're hearing from God. God is talking to you, but what is receiving is your spirit. So come back, come back. I didn't say go back. Come back, the two of you. Come back, come back, come back. Come back. So the challenge is this. Let me tell you what the challenge is. If you are being called, why don't you pick without the phone? When they say they are calling you, is your phone they are really calling? So when they say God is talking to you, it's not your ear God is talking to. It's your spirit inside that God is talking to. There's a, it's the same way that if you call me now, it's my phone that rings. When God talks to you, it's your spirit that rings. Do you get that? Yes, sir. The problem with hearing God is that you're expecting God to talk to your ear. You're saying, well, you're losing your little. No. When God is talking to you, it's not your ear that rings. It's your spirit that rings. 
So if if call again, call again, call again. Call again. You're calling? Dr. Schumer. Pick. No matter how long it rings, if it's not connected to his spirit, he cannot pick. This is a problem. The spirit realm is ringing you. You are trying to pick with your senses. It is not here. You must be connected to the, because you spiritual sickness is picked by spirits. Yeah. Spiritual sickness is picked by spirits. So when they say God is saying something, say God is saying something, look right and left. Is God physical? He's a spirit because this is a, these are signals. These are GSM signals moving up and down. So when God is talking to you, it's spiritual signal. What is it? God is here. So God is here. You know what most of you do? God is here. God. Yeah, you want to see something. But God is spirit. When I say God is here, it's a spiritual signal we're talking about. That people that are in tune, that have phone connections, GSM phones can pick it. Are you here? And this explains the reason why a lot of people don't hear God. Because they want to hear God with what? With their ears, with their eyes, with their nose, with their feeling. No, 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 no. We hear with our spirit. We what? We hear with what? Our spirit. So God is spirit and it communicates to our spirit. So throughout this teaching, we're going to teach you how the spirit speaks and how your spirit can pick the signals. Last scripture, Psalm 23, and that's it. Hallelujah. Wow. So when the Lord is speaking, know that you have to pick with your spirit, not with your ears. And they are not connected with your phone. There's no way you can pick. See what the Bible says here. Are you ready? Are you ready to close? Let's go. The Lord is my shepherd. And what? A lot of us quote this scripture. Mm, very nice. This scripture is a very powerful scripture about spiritual guardians. It said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why will I not want? Look at the next verse. Because what? He makes me to lie down. That makes me is another way to say he leads me to lie down. Question, where you are in business, is it God that led you there? He said he leads me to lie down in green pastures. Then he leads me beside what? This person you are dating that you always have to do night VG for. Is it still water or troubled waters? You just show up in his eyes. <laughs> just to make sure nobody's here. Oh. Then if the door is locked, you'll not be knocking like a crazy person. I know you're inside. I know you're inside. You will not open the door. Who are you with? I know you're inside. Is that trouble relationship or still relationship? This investment you want to do that you cannot sleep. He says he leads me beside still he tells you where he leads you to. He leads you beside still water. This Canada you want to move to, you've changed your name, you've changed this. We used to know you as, as, as Chantel. Now you know you as Abdul Razak. Because you have borrowed here from somebody, you have borrowed school resort, you have borrowed IT resort, you have borrowed this resort. But you just, he says, he leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters. He said, the Lord leads me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I was saying in other, in other service, sometimes we must be careful about testimony we take. Some people come and say, oh, God did it. God did it. But it was not God. They had to sleep around to get it. God didn't do it. Bomb bomb did it. It's not still water. It's troubled water you have. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Or oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> he leads me beside still water. When it's not still, be careful. God may not be there. And let me tell you something. Whatever God is not, whatever God's hand is not on, withdraw. 
He leads me beside still water. Look at verse 3. When he gets there, he restores my soul. He leads in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4. Then see what it says. Yeah. Notice something. Notice something. Notice something though. Every time he led me, still water, led me a green pasture. When I now decide to walk, I will use my own leg. Waka waka, enter trouble. Though I walk into the valley of the shadow of death, it's me that took my leg to walk into the valley of the shadow of death. Is that not why I'm a business? That business, you use your leg. You, you didn't get leading, you no. Know, you use your leg. Maybe you're a sharp, sharp guy. You're a sharp shooter. Yes, you are half hard graduate. You, oh, okay, or oh, guy, I understand. You know, you are this a sharp man. Hey, you are first class. He said, Though I walk, I'm the one that walked through the valley. You know, God is so kind. Even when you're in the valley, it doesn't say you're stupid. He comes and stay with you. That's why some of you, you don't know that you are ruining your best by building your good. Because even though you're there, God will say, okay, you've messed it up. Let's arrange it. And I say, ah, this is the best. It's not the best. It's makeover. God has the best. But you have not been led to know. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Glory to God. What I wanted to pray for is that God will give you an, a hearing here and a seeing eyes. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you, you need a way out of where you are that God will show you. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone here that they will be able to hear and sense the will of God clearly. This is my prayer for them today. That everyone here will know where they should be. They will not be carried away by competition or comparison. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will lead them beside the still water. I pray for everyone here that needs a way out, that the Spirit of God will show you a way out. That whatever is not allowing you to see, it will be opened up to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. you can have your seats. Were you blessed today? Yes. Brothers and sisters in church, please pay attention. Now. You know, people don't say, one of your secrets, this is one of my biggest secrets in life I just shared with you. As boring as it could sound, as exciting could sound, this one of his, I always check. I always check. Because you know that me and my pastor, so it's a spiritual work. If God is not there to show, Business, it may take some time for it to show, but Pastor Walk, you will show loud. If they say, we want to buy this property, give me some time. I've even never mind. Is it? It's not mine, though. I, I had to make up spirit first. The reason why is that if the cloud does not follow, when people rise against you, how will you fight? Anyway, it will not. I'm telling you. Uh, let's go and do this. this, this, this. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and give our offerings.